What's up, guys? Welcome back to our weekly chat show where we <laughs> basically talk about all the stuff we actually care about in the news. Mm -hmm. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, friends. Later on, we're going to be jumping into this Try Not to Cringe challenge amongst YouTubers with Musical.ly stars. Mm. And then we have the really important stuff, like trying the Cheeto Burrito. Yo. Yes. So I came with a big appetite. I hope you guys did too. But first, I'm going to kick this show off with something that I saw this week that's really interesting. This week, some study hit the web that said that people who are in relationships who post about their relationships a lot on their social media pages, whether it's Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, are actually in a worse place in their relationship than people who don't post about it. So do you guys think that PDA on Instagram and social media generally means you're compensating for something? I think it's different for everybody. Like on the surface, I think when people post an excessive amount of stuff yeah. with their partner, it's like, okay, how happy really are you? Because it's like you're not smiling and giggling and kissing each other's faces all the time. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, it's like if you're happy and you want to post a picture with your mm -hmm. boyfriend or girlfriend, like I don't see anything wrong with it. I don't think that necessarily means that there's trouble in paradise because you're trying to put like whatever this look out. I think it just depends on the situation. You know? I agree. I don't think there's like a rule that you can't post about it, but I think people that are posting about it constantly, when you think about it, when you take a selfie, you're not taking one selfie, you're taking a lot of selfies. So yeah. it's like, how much of this is them like trying to make it look like they're the perfect couple, and how much is because they're actually enjoying themselves and want to document the moment. I'm I'm in a relationship, and when I've been in a really crappy place in my relationship, I'm not posting about us. But also, when I'm in an amazing place in my relationship, I'm also not posting about Interesting. us. Interesting. So you're saying it's the opposite for you. For me personally, I just don't post about my relationship because it's mine, and I want to keep it mine. Yeah. And I think maybe that's what hurts relationships, because there's a social pressure. Once mm -hmm. people are used to seeing you, yeah. then you feel like you have to, there's an expectation, like, oh, you got to be Miriam and wh whoever well, his name is. <laughs> post, there must be trouble in paradise. Exactly. Yeah, but in reality, it's like, no, we just didn't take a picture yesterday. Exactly. I actually <laughs> think that I hope that people post more about their really? relationships. Yeah, because I think in this society, especially in like what we do, you are sexier when you're single, right? You're more mm. available. People find you more attractive when you're single. I read this article this week that if you're applying for a job that you should take your engagement ring off right. because employers yes. think that you're more employable if you're single. Especially in this industry. Totally. Yeah. But I think in industries across the board, so I love it, especially when there's a man who is willing to go on his Instagram or his Facebook. John Legend does this mm -hmm. a ton and talks about how much he loves his wife. I I love that. I'm like, yes. so but I also feel like his posts are much like deeper and more like he does really proclaim his love for his wife all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the people that are posting like, oh my god, like yeah. Yeah, 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 where it's like really shallow, day. just like superficial I pictures. Totally yeah. yeah. agree with you. In fact, I think that's kind of annoying. Okay, one of the reasons why I don't like to post about my relationship is because if someone is lonely out there or if someone is going through rough times in their relationship or a breakup, mm. I kind of just don't want to rub my amazing relationship in their face. And that is very annoying to me. Like, yay, we're cute, selfie. Mm -hmm. But a, an, an act of love like that, where you're exactly. really just calling out like the beautiful soul in your partner, I feel like that's a different story. But at the yeah. same time, when you're in a relationship, I don't want to feel like I shouldn't post about my husband if we're actually out of place, having a really good time. Yeah. I, I'm doing. I'm posting for me and not for like everyone who's following me. But I think no, that's the difference. That's, that's good. Yeah. It's different when someone's like, oh, I'm insecure about my relationship. Right, and people yeah. like knowing if I'm in a relationship exactly. or not, so I'm gonna post about it uh, so it looks like I am. You I know? have an issue with the sentence, I'm posting for me, literally to post means to involve other people in it. Otherwise, if you're having a great time at dinner, you're already there. The reason you post is because you want to let other people know about it. So you're or not it, just posting Or it for adds you. to my aesthetic. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I think it has, like, if you're afraid of having Alzheimer's one day and you want to, like, chronicalize all yes. the things that you have in your life. But you don't, you, like, you don't have to post it. Exactly. You can still take the picture. No, no, no. It takes is, some cloud space. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can order a book at the end of the year of all of your events on Instagram, and it gives wow. you like these printed little yeah. books you have every year memorialized. Yeah. Well, and, that, and that is the point of Instagram yeah. is to memorialize yeah. your life yeah. as you are living it. But to an audience, do, yeah. exactly. So 
I think, to your friends and family, for most people. Yeah. To us as an audience, because we work on <laughs> camera. What? But like to my to my husband, if he, he literally has three photos. Yeah. Yeah. And he's been on Instagram for five years. And it's just because he wants his mom to see it. That's you know? cute. That's for me, true. as a single person, I just have commitment issues. Yes. So like I don't uh, like want to post about what something. Break up in a week. Right. I have to delete the photo. I'm like, I don't want to deal with it. So like I'm gonna wait until we're together for like six years, then maybe I'll post about it. Put a ring on it and then you can be on my Instagram. Right. <laughs> okay, can we move on? Yeah. Okay, so moving on to Bella Thorne. Oh. So she posted some Snapchats. <laughs> Speaking of social media. <laughs> Speaking of social media, oh, she sharing. posted right. She posted some Snapchats of her kissing Bella Pendergast, who's her brother's ex-girlfriend. Wait, her name's Bella too. Yeah. How right? I had no idea. Yeah, her name's Bella. Her Bella. name's Bella too. <laughs> Bella squared. What? Another That's connection. A lot. So she she's posted, dating herself. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> but also her boyfriend, her brother's ex girlfriend. Wait, so. is this a Kardashian relationship? Or right? What? It might be. <laughs> so, so wait, her and her brother have dated the same both. girl. So but we don't know. We don't know if she's dating her. So you guys. So she posted <laughs> on Snapchat of her kissing her, and so people, someone's tweeted her and they're like, are you bisexual? And she simply said yes. So a lot of people are saying this is her coming out as bisexual. Others are saying she was just like, maybe just trying to have a publicity stunt. She just broke up with Greg Sulkin. So we don't know for sure if she is bisexual or if she was just being like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm bisexual, I'm kissing this girl, whatever. Mm -hmm. You guys be the judge, check out this clip. Over here. Come here. Okay, but you're not getting in there, it's so cold. Oh my God, I just yeah. so happy I found you. So they've known each other since they were 15 years old. She's been in their life forever. I don't know if it's her just like going through this separation anxiety from her boyfriend and she's like, I need to like show that I'm happy and whatever. But the big question here is bisexuality. What do you guys think? Do you think it's a real legitimate thing? Or do you think it's like a transitional phase between like you're actually gay, but you're trying to tell people that you're straight and you don't really know how to, you know, come out as being gay. Well, we're a bunch of scientists here, so I'm <laughs> sure we're gonna give you a scientific answer that proves that it is or isn't. I don't know, I, you know, have a passionate opinion about this. I do, and I don't think you need to be a scientist, you just need to be a human being with sexual attraction to others to understand how sexual attraction Maybe works. that's my problem. <laughs> uh, of course my sexuality exists. I don't think sexuality is so binary. We mm. love to stick people in boxes. You're either straight or you're gay. Uh, and until a few decades ago, we weren't even acknowledging gay as an option. Of course you can also be bisexual. I think most people lie on a spectrum. I actually think you, the minorities in the population are either completely homosexual or completely straight. I think most of us lie somewhere in the middle. I agree. I honestly think that really? everybody is bisexual. Everybody. Everybody. Because as humans, we're just sexual beings, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think whatever society decide that, okay, people have to be straight or they have to be gay or they have to be bisexual. Like, what, like why are we putting these categories on things where it's well, like, yes. you're just being attracted to everybody? I also you know? think it's ironic that the thing everyone is focusing on is that she came out as bisexual and not the fact that she's dating her brother's yeah, yeah, girlfriend totally three weeks after you're she like, broke up with her boyfriend that she's okay. been with for like over a year now. Yeah. Right. I think everybody's talking about it because the timing is interesting because mm -hmm. she just broke up with him. And, you know, Bella, Bella's great. She does know how to walk a line. She does know how to get her name in headlines. So some people are questioning whether it is truly a thing that she feels or if it's something that she's trying to do for press. Um, but to your point and to your point, I kind of feel like I've never felt bisexual. Like, I've never wanted or felt sexually attracted to another woman. That it must not exist. Yes, well, not exist. <laughs> but it also, in the flip side, doesn't mean that it, everybody does, right? So I think that like, I think there are some people, like you said, there is a spectrum. I definitely don't fall on a spectrum. You're definitely straight. I can look yeah. at a woman though and be like, that girl is freaking hot but I don't want to have sex with her. Like, that thought never crosses yeah, my mind. Yeah, fair. So, I mean, Angelina Jolie? I mean, how come on. How much is she, she paying me to do it? Any girl. Any day. She would have both. So maybe you guys are speaking like from personal experience. <laughs> I'm speaking from personal experience, and it's just different. But I just, I don't know. I think that people using their sexuality to come out is cool and empowering. empowering. I just sometimes worry that, like, the intention is it's not good, good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think people have been using their sexuality to make headlines, period. Yeah. Straight yeah. people mm -hmm. use totally. it to make headlines. I like, say yeah. the same thing about Kim Kardashian. Every time she exactly. poses nude for some Snapchat video, I, 
And you know what? Then I, I, I think it robs other people. Okay, anyone who isn't straight, you have to fight so hard to get your own sexuality validated. So then when other people are exploiting it because it looks cool to kiss a girl when you're a girl on social media, then you're kind of robbing other people of like a legitimate struggle. Does yeah. that make sense? So if it's yeah. not a real thing that you feel, don't just throw it out there and not take it seriously. Well, and it even goes back to the PDA on Instagram and Snapchat, yeah. for example. Yeah. Like, is she posting this because she wants people to talk about it, or she really wants to, like, proclaim her love for this person that she's known for the last few years? I, but, like, it seems to me that that's not something you would randomly post on Snapchat, especially after you got yeah. out of a long-term <laughs> relationship. So, Unless like, you're Taylor Swift. Unless, yeah. Well, I think uh, that's fake too. So. I mean, I think it's, it's definitely calculated. Because guys like think it's hot for girls yeah. to like be kissing each other. She just broke up with him. He right. wants, she still wants him to think that she's sexy, whatever. So she's like, I'm going to kiss a girl and he's going to see it. Guys, so maybe they're true. just really you know? close family friends and they're well, the type of people who just kiss on the lips. Some people are mouth kissers. It's so true. That's why I even thought after I, I think. The pictures of them kissing, the two different pictures, that tells a lot more than the Snapchat video. The Snapchat video, they could have just been it like messing like she around. just missed, you yeah. know? And just, <laughs> she yeah. was like, well, and I she just like lingered Sinaria. a little too long. Like, it was like an awkward situation. situation. I almost did the same thing with Emma Roberts when they pranked Jocelyn oh. and I <laughs> for that New Year's. I was like, okay, I think I'm about to kiss my first girl. Just might as well. I feel like I'm actually attracted to her, great but, first girl. but just because yeah. I was like, I have no yeah. other way out of this situation <laughs> except to do it. And it was the whispering of the, did you just try to kiss you down? Did she just make you try to kiss down? It would have been a great moment, but it didn't happen. So Ooh. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. Uh, <laughs> you guys, well, the VMAs are happening this weekend. Speaking oh, of yes. Taylor Swift, we have so much to talk about. Before it even happens, we're predicting all the drama. Right. It's going to go down because there's always drama every single year. And this year, I think it's going to be the most dramatic mm -hmm. VMAs totally of all agree. time. I hope so. Mark, I hope so. I, hope so. I, I love me some so drama at the VMAs. I just hate a boring award show. Me too. There is nothing I worse know. than sitting through something for three hours. Just and for having, the awards. Yeah. yeah. Well, that are all fake anyway. <laughs> I want to see nip slips. I want to see controversy. Yes. I want to see controversy. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Speaking of, I'm going to get to Kanye in just a second, but let's talk about Britney Spears for just a hot minute. She's going to be performing since her first kind of epic comeback in 2007 that was kind of a bomb. Yeah, it wasn't so really So she's epic. coming back. A lot of people think she's going to it. be opening the show. I hope that she kills it, but after seeing her residency in Vegas, I think she's going to slay. I hope she opens the show secretly. Really? But this year there isn't a host, which I find very interesting. They're just oh. going to have a bunch of presenters presenting, okay. one of which is Kim Kardashian, okay. which I find fascinating because I... What is she going to say? What so is she going to say? So I have a feeling it's going to be something about a Snake. It's gonna be Ooh, something so. very, like, very passive, passive aggressive, aggressive yep. subtle, but mm -hmm. like very obvious. Mm -hmm. And yeah. funny, I yeah. think. Yeah. And Calvin Harris is going to be there. He's nominated in three categories, so that means he has three shots of getting on stage. <laughs> yes. Will he talk about Taylor I Swift? I don't think he will. You I hope he does because that'll make great news for us. But yeah. you know, it will also give her more fame, and I don't think he wants to do that. I don't think I think he wants it to die. But two of the nominations are for This Is What You Came For, yeah. which inevitably gives her fame. Will he thank her? Uh, no. But I think the fault in all this is that she's not going to be there. Yeah, like, it's just she's not. No. no. Listen, listen, listen. You say that, but rumor on the street is she actually could show up and actually surprise us all. What street? The street that TMZ follows. <laughs> the street. Oh. Because they followed her this week. She is in New York as of Wednesday. You know, she's been mm -hmm. jet setting with Tom. She is in New York right now. And it is time for her to release another album. She releases albums in September and October every two years. It is time for her to do that now. What epicness would go down Ooh, if what she if? shows up, drops an album, drops a music video that oh she and Tom goes to Making Out on the Rock, to goes what? to one of her new songs. I'm just saying oh my that's my twin villainy. What if Kim K yeah, 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 yeah. the whole thing? Oh my gosh. Wait, that would be everything. Yeah. I would be yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Would, you might be right. And then Katy Perry came out and they did a duet to Rock. Oh my gosh. We couldn't handle it. <laughs> and John Mayer is. played music? <laughs> I'm actually going into a fit right now. I'm like, so I'm like, so like so not so so like, <laughs> Speaking of, MTV has given this homeboy four minutes mm -hmm. to literally, quote, do whatever he wants yeah. Stop to it. do. Yeah. He could sing, he could do a jig, he could talk, he could talk run for about president in 2024. He's gone, <laughs> MTV. I have four four minutes. Minutes. He's just going to come up there and perform famous. That's honestly what I think is going to happen. Yeah. I, don't think I wonder that when he sings the line, what will happen? 
Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 just yeah, like yeah. came out. Was like, yeah. She rises from the stage in the bed naked. <laughs> like I'm here. <laughs> but what? Donald and Hillary on each other. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I would literally. Is, there, is that considered nudity if it's wax figures of nude people? I, I, I consider sure. it nudity. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah. Nudity. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Musically's, and I mean, who are famous play, by the way? Who are very millions <laughs> of musically followers. stars are like huge. Yeah, they are. But a lot of the videos, okay, I have to admit that it's a little cringy. Like some of it's like very like inappropriate. Like a ten year old girl like twerking, like yeah, it's very seductive. Licking lips. Ugh. Yeah. So like I, I, I haven't get gotten it. into those wormholes uh, yet. So oh, you don't want to go down that hole. Okay. It's a little dark. Okay. But <laughs> so I think I get why it's become a popular thing for YouTubers to make these reaction videos. But it's kind of like bullying in a sense. Basically, they're just like Aww. making fun of the like little kids doing whatever. So my question for you guys is it going too far for this to be a trend that it's like, oh, the cringeworthy challenge, or do they kind of have a right to, to like say what they feel because the kids are putting it out there for people to see? Mm, I think it's mm. I think it's bullying, and I also feel like people on YouTube should remember the days when people thought people on YouTube were ridiculous and didn't take them seriously. Yeah. I feel like YouTubers are at a point now where they're like, okay, I'm established, I have books, I have movies. I can talk about this because I have made it. And I'm like, I remember six years ago when it was kind of like a joke that you were on YouTube. And so I think they should give other platforms the same respect that they wanted. And I also think these are kids just having fun and being themselves. And some of them do really put in a lot of time and a lot of effort. And some of them are interesting and entertaining. Of course, they're gonna be shitty things in every single platform, but generally speaking, I feel like this is bullying and I feel like they should be nice. I mean, who cares? It, are they jealous? Like, I feel like it comes yeah. from like a jealous place. I think it's more like how adults don't understand YouTube is how we don't understand Musical.ly. Like, Maybe. I get it, I'll watch it. <laughs> and it's like, I'm like, oh wow, how'd they do that? That was kind of cool. And all like the weird like, oh, I'm putting yeah. But then you're over it. But then I'm like, how long did it take you to do that? Yeah. What are you gonna do with this? Yeah. What does yeah. lip sync like? Unless you're gonna go beyond James Corden's like, yeah, yeah, lips yeah. or right. what, uh, the whatever lip sync yeah. battle yeah. or like go, carpool karaoke. It's not. Yeah. It's not like a sustainable career. I'm most can and but if like people want to do it for fun, although that's whatever. what they used to say about YouTubers. Right. <laughs> and, uh, Here we are. The right. very are. essence about YouTube is that it's like people making content. This is kind of taking someone else's content and then just like video like. It, I, I know, think it's it not is making content though. I feel like I've seen YouTubers do like lip sync stuff too, and it's they get lots of views on videos of doing covers and stuff. But like, and it's not like you can monetize something like music that. Music like just came out. I don't think it's fair for us to decide now how sustain, sustainable it is, whether there's a future to it. I think the real question is. Are you allowed to recklessly trash someone oh, else's no. video? Mean, that's not, I don't I think it's cool. Well, and then YouTube came out with something that they're like gonna be more strict about yeah. it and they can take down videos. So YouTube did release a mm. statement and they're saying, yeah, basically they're, they're gonna start taking down videos that are just straight up bullying. They said, we want you to use YouTube without fear of being subjected to malicious harassment in cases where harassment crosses the line into a malicious attack. It can be reported and will be removed. In other cases, users may be mildly annoying or petty and should simply be ignored. So they're like grouping the harassment into categories. So they're saying videos, comments, messages, revealing someone's personal information, or maliciously recording someone without their consent. So all of that is falling under the category of like your crap will be taken down if it is that. So a lot of people are like, is that infringing on freedom of speech? Like, should we just be allowed to say whatever we want? Well, I mean, no, we like, shouldn't. What, I was gonna say, one, no, being rude is not like, just because you can say it doesn't mean you should. should right? Yeah, exactly. I think it's more like, and who at YouTube is making all of these decisions? Like, is it one person sitting at their computer, like going through however millions and millions of videos are like, how can they monitor that? I think that's why I think yeah, that's, that's a gray area and why a lot of people are upset. Because well, I guess you'd report it, no? I guess, but it's like people can report in everything. I, I think there's yeah. probably some sort of like legal standard. I'm sure that whoever is getting these videos taken down or have a legal team that's reached out to them. I don't know that it's just like emotions. Well, and the people getting mad about it aren't necessarily someone that like makes a rude comment in like if we were talking about something and one of us said something about a musically star. That's not what they're worried about. It's people like Rice Gum and people yeah, like exactly. that are rep uh, that, no, reporting on it. <laughs> that are literally the entire video is to make fun of them and like like play a video, react to it. But the reactions aren't like kind reactions. Right. They're all awful. Negative. So Look, I, and it's ten year olds. I agree with out. freedom of speech, but there's a difference between freedom of speech and a platform that someone actually created and owns. Like YouTube is owned by someone and if you don't want your platform yeah. to be used by other totally. people exactly. who are mm -hmm. borrowing it to spread hate, then that person is allowed to make that call and I'm glad that we're finally talking about yeah. harassment. Let me just yeah. play devil's advocate a little bit on this. Sure. I feel like that YouTubers who talk about Musical.ly stars and are doing these like bashing sessions, 
might also be desperate themselves to get views mm -hmm. and know that people are going to be searching for music. Well, that's 100% what they're doing. Yeah. 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 So it's not like, like, like views. No, and that's it's why people like Rick exactly. Scott have blown up in the last yeah. few months yeah. because people like to watch him rip on other people. I don't think that necessarily means that everyone watching it agrees with him, but they like to see how far is he going to go Absolutely. and yeah. like roast this 10-year-old. Right. I am mostly concerned back to the musically thing about like, if people want to do musically for fun, that's totally fine. Who cares? Whatever. Do what you want. It's when it's like 10 year olds being yeah. really overly sexual and yeah. stuff, and I'm more like, where just are your parents? Yeah. That's I'm like, a cultural I'm like, Do your yeah. parents? Yeah. 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 Like, That's the only thing. I'm yeah. like, if just be of age or like put some clothes. I don't know. It just makes me uncomfortable. Respect like, yeah. your bodies. Yeah. Value your minds more than you value your <laughs> I'm so I'm so <laughs> usually not that person who's like, oh, like be conservative, like cover up. No, bodies. but it's just like You're 10 years old. Oh, it's, it's too much. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, it makes too me uncomfortable. Far. Also, follow us on Musical.ly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you guys, so speaking, speaking of, drop, drop the tags. <laughs> I was kind of kidding, but it's kind of serious. But, but you guys, speaking of huge musically stars, so Jacob Sartorius is a huge one, and he recently made a video about coming out as adopted. So uh, the internet is freaking out because people are like, you don't need to make a coming out video about being adopted. <laughs> and they're saying that too many people are just making that coming out videos for clickbait, mm -hmm. or it's, you're not really like coming out as anything. You so know? I right. watched it. He doesn't say like I'm coming out as being like he doesn't use right. that. Term. He just talks. About yeah. He just says like I want it's something like about my life or something. And he like just like I wanted to share something with you so we can be a little closer. Blah blah. So then I start, and it's basically he's like, oh, I was adopted. Big whoop. A lot of people are adopted. I don't think that's oh, something okay. you really need to reveal. But if he felt that he wanted to, sure, that's fine. The funniest part is that I then scrolled down, looked at some of the comments. Or people are freaking so out, freaking out, going, Losing "How out. dare you make people click on this and like you yeah. and like share something so Why stupid?" Are people so I was weird. like, "Weird. You clicked on the video clearly, and you took time to comment exactly. on the video. Yeah. Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. Wait, what were they disappointed at? That it wasn't He's like a, a bigger big announcement. About it. That yeah. it wasn't that he like was coming out as gay or something. He was like, "Oh, that's it." And then there was. Like, There's so many. <laughs> he was like, Why "Who cares? Love to hate. Like literally, what is inside of you?" that people just love to hate. That's so weird And why me. do you think we actually care about every single opinion that you have about everything? Yes. Like, why people are over over elevated yeah. in their opinions and think that because they have one, we that they should there. tell everyone well, their opinion. Don't watch in the my video. opinion, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. I like your opinion. <laughs> Actually, I'm definitely one of those people. I think all of my opinions are so important. And I <laughs> overshare it. all the time. But you don't do it in a hateful way. And yeah, that's the I whole point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, you're fine. Can I talk about, speaking of hate and opinions and feuds, I know we normally don't talk about politics, but this trans transgender bathroom issue is affecting a lot of people and a yeah. lot of mm -hmm. teens. Do you guys know? Okay, so basically, the federal government, Obama specifically, who is very pro LGBT and wants to leave office, having completely transformed, like shifted that yeah. area, um, he told all the states, hey, at schools, you guys aren't allowed to tell your students what bathroom they can pee in. So if someone is biologically a different sex than what they identify with, they should be allowed to use the bathroom that they identify with. 13 conservative states got up in arms about it, sued the federal government, and temporarily, a judge has actually sided with those states. Uh, a judge in Texas has now decided that Texas can tell schools where people can pee or not. And the reason why this is a really big deal on both sides is because conservatives are afraid that a dangerous man is gonna dress up as a woman and sort of exploit this opportunity. Could they not do that please. anyway? They're I'm doing sorry. that anyway, yeah. already. I, I, the yeah. whole thing I don't get is like, there's, I mean, men's bathrooms, maybe not because they there's urinals out in the open, but girls' bathrooms all have stalls anyway. Yes. I don't yes. understand why they're acting like once you enter the bathroom, it's this like sexual area yeah. where they're gonna attack you. I'm like, it's a bathroom. It's not a Why don't we have a bunch of co-ed bathrooms? It doesn't matter what sex you are, right. and anyone can just go. It's already uncomfortable enough for me to go number two in a bathroom. <laughs> I know. I, like, I, I don't really care who's in there. Men, dogs, I don't know, aliens. I'm sorry <laughs> if you're caught in the bathroom with me when that happens. Uh, yeah, I think that this is so interesting that there's so much going on in our world right now that 
really is, is like life or death, right? That's right. Like, that's we, that are that people are dying, people are starving. Uh, Refugees, people, biggest crisis ever. I mean, we have such serious issues going on. Not to say that this isn't serious to some people, because it is. Um, just for me, I just feel like the fact that people are so passionate and so up in arms about something like this, when there's so many other things that you should really be so up in arms about. I just, I don't know that my whole life, like I don't know that I've ever heard anybody personally, I don't know a single person, um, and I know a lot of people that have, ever, <laughs> that have ever said, I really feel like the bathrooms are unfair. And I know that there is an argument for that. Okay, well, there's like, there's, yeah, there's a big argument there because it's like when someone comes out as transgender, it's like, it, there, it, there's an uncomfort about like what bathroom they're gonna choose, like a discomfort. And it's like a lot of times they're put in an uncomfortable position because it's like now, say you were a man who transitioned to a woman. Right. Do you go you by were, what you look like or do you go by your genitalia? Well, yeah. But right. to and Lily's point, she just said that to her, it doesn't matter what bathroom, it does, she doesn't think about it as a sexual place. So I feel like also, is yeah, that I'm not the one suing. <laughs> no, wait, shouldn't yeah. that be a mentality that everyone should feel like, hey, I mean, you identify as a guy and you go to the bathroom as a no, girl. No, I'm not I'll tell you, if a guy walked into the girl's bathroom, you would be like, oh my God, what? But like, what if that, what if she didn't, what if it was actually a girl, but she was transitioning so, and didn't know a bathroom, so she went in and then like people reacted. Okay, Maybe no. I'm just not the type of person that would even think twice about Wait, it. Wait, I, I have, have an cool. answer. I have an answer. The reason why this really matters is because transgenders are the popu one of the populations that most get raped and assaulted for being transgender yeah. and bathrooms are one of the top places where those assaults happen. And it happens when you're forced to go to a bathroom outside of but your gender. But is that going to yeah. stop when you change the sign on the door? Well, you wouldn't change, well, so if a person was born a girl but feels like a boy is now forced to go to a men's bathroom and those mm -hmm. men resent that boy who is dressing but like a girl. straight men who are men who identify as men can also now go into the women. So this is my and concern is what's, like what's no, the no, ideal? No, no, no. The, I think my thing is what's the ideal solution? My problem is just that there's people who are trying to fight this from happening. No, that's stupid. But like I don't know, but what is, the, what are they trying to make happen? Do they want, is, is so, the goal to have a third bathroom? Just to make everyone feel comfortable. But well, not no, all but places like, have no, a third bathroom. It's not like there's like bathroom police enforcing who goes in and out. So it's like, what? What's the solution? Some people are saying that there should be a third bathroom, and some people are saying, look, I've been having a fight to validate my real gender on the inside for so long. I just, I don't want to go to the third bathroom. I want to go to the well, bathroom that's what I would think of the gender that I identify with. To have to yeah. have a third bathroom. Exactly. So it's like I would see the only solution to be one bathroom, because then you don't have to pick, and no one can judge like you. Like in Europe. Way. All co well, yes. A lot of bars have co-ed bathrooms anyway. I know, I never worry about it. But here's the thing, is that going to stop? a man who wants to rape someone from raping them because of a bathroom situation. I just well, don't it is going to stop will. a grown man who always goes to pee at the male's bathroom. It is going to stop him from being exposed to a half-dressed transgender teen. Yes, if that he, teen but would then now, the other sex would be exposed to But them if he too, can so. say, well, no, I identify myself as a woman. That's why I went into the women's restroom well, to do this to this person. Okay, so those are all good questions. Yeah. So uh, the FBI asked the top 17 uh, largest school districts that have adopted these very flexible, progressive transgender bathroom laws. Not the conservative ones, the ones where you can just go to the bathroom that you feel like going to. Mm -hmm. And ever since they adopted them, there has not been one case of assault by a transgender person going to their favorite bathroom. Those districts aside, there are plenty of cases of assaults of transgender people in the bathrooms that they're forced to go to. So I think the math says it all. And I also think it's interesting, bathrooms, this is not new. They have been the battleground for, for civil rights for a long time. In the Jim Crow era, uh, there were white people bathrooms and black people bathrooms, and you couldn't mix those. And then when women got in the uh, workforce, a lot of companies didn't even have bathrooms for women because there were such few women working. So you were forced to you know, get nude in a bathroom next to a man. Handicap people, they had to fight for their civil right to be able to go to a toilet where they fit in their wheelchair. So I just feel like this is just the next wave of a civil rights era. And 
And I understand what you're saying that yeah. it's like, oh, I don't, there are bigger issues happening. Well, I think there's 300 million people or so in the U.S. There's 700,000 transgender people. The odds are we don't know one, so we don't know what they're going through. But for that minority, it's, it's a, freaking important. It's a, a big issue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's my point. Okay, now that we've talked <laughs> about really trivial topics, it's on to the important things. <laughs> Burritos. Yay! Yay! That's what we came for. <laughs> okay, guys. So, Taco Bell They're so cute. is experimenting. It's not available everywhere. It's only in Ohio at the moment. Do I get one? Wow. As oh, well? Nice. nice. We have oh, three yes. total, I think. Yay. So, oh, and they're warm. Taco oh. Bell is experimenting with doing, it's basically a beefy, a beef burrito, beef and cheese burrito, but then they've added Cheetos. Shut up. Cheetos are the wow. big trend right now. Burger King just did the mac and Cheetos, which I have not tried. Is Burger King still doing that? Yeah. Mm. Okay. I just started eating. Are you supposed to? Oh yeah. So here, oh, I want to show the. So people. here's the cross section. We had to make oh, wow. this ourselves because they're not available that. in California. <laughs> but here's the nice sharing? cross section. There's only three. Here we go. No here. There's um, here. Here. Have a hot. Oh my god. I'm like, starving. So this is, I'm okay. excited. Do they have hot Cheeto ones? Oh, there's a knife too. But. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, wow. Why is my life changing? Look good. Legitimately, and I also like, have to point hey, out that these have been sitting here while we, we've been filming this, so <laughs> they're a little cold. Imagine if they just come out of the microwave. Exactly. Um, I kind of just transported somewhere else. Mm -hmm. It was pretty good. Cheetos are so good. I've always thought I wanted to make a cookbook with just Cheeto recipes. Like, like I have to say, I don't taste the Cheetos that much. Like this is phenomenal. Oh, really? I don't taste them that Did much. Did you get a bite like this? Mm -hmm. No, I got Cheetos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's something in here that's like chemically awesome. Give it a little crunch. This mm. also isn't the first time talking about your brain? chemically altering it. Mm -hmm. like in a good, good way. Yeah, mm -hmm. in a good way. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're like, drugs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cheetos. <laughs> no, actually, there was a, something I read that says that things that foods like what? Cheetos. This is so life altering. Well, it's it is. But it's not Guys. food for nutrition. What were you going to say? Mm. Some nutrition <laughs> experts have even called foods like Cheetos hyper uh, pal palatable. <laughs> palatable. There that we work. go. I can talk. I don't even know what that means. With fat and salt content so intense, they short circuit our brain's reward centers. <laughs> I can vouch for that. Meaning it makes you too happy. And I'm being short circuited right now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But so, um, Taco Bell also did the the loco Dorito taco or whatever. I don't know what any of them are called. Yeah, but, it doesn't um, matter. They've used a lot of outside brands. They also do their cinnamon roll things. Mm -hmm. I think they've all been very successful. And mm -hmm. people love Cheetos, and we're all eating it right now. Oh, so. Yeah. But under what circumstances do you eat this? Um, anytime right I feel like it. <laughs> when, they, when they're handed to you and they taste great. Anytime. I'm actually, oh I don't eat a lot of fast food, but I, well, I, do, I lie. I'm just, I just lied to you. <laughs> <laughs> Tweeting about how there's no drive throughs I mean, self-denial. Um, I don't eat a lot of Taco Bell, but this will make me go through a Taco Bell drive-thru. Oh, me too. I'm going to Okay, guys. Um, we have a lot of eating to do. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've what? noticed. Um, so we want to ask you a couple of questions before you go mm -hmm. about all this stuff. We got into some deep stuff today. We you did. Mm -hmm. questions? I want to hear about your opinion on transgender issues and also the VMAs which yes. are oh, today. Yes. Let us know what you think. Yes. Who's going to win and who's going to get trash talked? Uh. You guys, I want to hear what you guys think about this whole Musical.ly thing and the cringeworthy mm -hmm. challenge. Is it okay? Is it not okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you cringing? Let me know. What about you? Do you have any questions? Would you eat this burrito? Yes. <laughs> I, yes. I would. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We'd stay, but we have other things, bigger, bigger important things to do. We're going to be here, though, on Sunday night for the VMAs covering that, so make sure you subscribe and follow Clever for that. And yes. that's our show for today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. We'll be back here next week, right? Yeah. Dancing like this and eating burritos. And we don't melt down because of how good it's Dancing and eating one, two, three, <laughs> And if you want even more Clever, click to the left, because we're talking the most shocking breakup of 2016. So far, we get that it's not over yet. Or click to the right to see our brand new challenge show, which we do step with no hands. It's a disaster. <laughs> a beautiful. What are you doing? I'm sorry.